This is John for the John G's Beat and the Patch. Today, I have the pleasure of being on the beat with transformational writing coach, Don Montefusco. How are you? Great, actually. I'm doing really good. <laughs> I've known you for years, and I think this is the first time we've talked, and it's going to be a fun ride. Yeah, this is the first time that we've actually talked in person, too. We've We've, we've been on social media and emails together for, I think, since I was 35, and I'm 54, so that's almost 20 years. Oh, you're not 54. <laughs> you're like in your late 20s, at least you look that's, that way. That's what I say. It's fine. It's easy. In, in your mind and your heart, you're still yeah. in your 20s. It's true. It's a problem, but it's true. <laughs> hey, it works for everybody. You know, You know, I, there's no way I think I'm 58. And, oh, yeah, I wasn't oh my God, you're 58? I wouldn't have even guessed that. Yeah. Oh, uh, you're being you're too kind. But let's look <laughs> into um, what exactly is a transformational writing coach? So uh, I have a master's of fine art in in creative writing, and I thought I wanted to teach college. So there's no reason I get a master's in fine arts, by the way. Everybody out there, the only reason I did it is because instead of a master's, I got an MFA because it's a terminal degree, which sounds bizarre. Uh, <laughs> there's no PhD in writing. So in order to teach on a college level, the easiest way is to make sure you get the highest level of education and write some books, and then you can apply to certain colleges to be a professor or a teacher or whatever. So I did that, and then I worked in community colleges because I really loved working with younger people who were getting their lives back together and to teach them to follow their heart. Many of the community colleges, or are, are, I'm going to be very kind, but at the same time, they're very generic in the sense that they teach people how to be marketable, how to get the basics and how to get out there. Well, I really loved being the anomaly and I wound up becoming one of the founding members of something called the Gateway to College Program, which is now a national program that was sponsored by a $10 million grant from the Bill Gates Foundation. And me and like eight other people came up with a way to get at-risk youth off the streets into a community college and get their high school diploma and their AA degree at the same time. And it was very strenuous a uh, program. So it was for like the, the, the ones that really wanted it. You know, they, they were like, you know what? I want to catch up with my life. My life dealt me some cards that sucked <clears throat> or they were socially not into high schools. And so I helped with the curriculum and all that stuff. But the joke is, is I'm sort of like Robin Williams, may he rest in peace dead, of dead poet society, because even though I was helping to write the curriculums to keep them in school and to keep them going into college, I would say, take that curriculum, put it aside, not necessarily rip it up and throw it away, just put it over there. And then I started to coach them into what do you really want? And I started to practice language and I started to practice microscopic language. And I started to realize that I was even programmed in a microscopic way. And I was let on from abuse and from being told certain things in the Bronx growing up in a blue collar family and that I was limited and all this other stuff. So it, someone said, you should be a life coach in 2007. And I was like, I don't even know what that is. And so I went to a college. I went to um, Erickson College actually had a, 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 a they have a program where you get credits and you can get a certification takes about a year. Then you can go on to get ICF certified, which is a big certification. It's an International Coaching Federation certification. I've done all the hours on a master level of that. And so I was doing life coaching and I was doing some career coaching, uh, left the community college after seven years and passed the torch onto other people because that was a big job and tiresome. And then I was like, wait a second. Every time I got a consulting gig, helping people, mostly helping like corporate or I was an editor in chief uh, for a fitness company or whatever, the CEOs used to say, hey, I'm writing a memoir. Do you think you could help me? And I was like, okay. And so on the side, they would hire me to, to help them write. And then because of the, the the training I have on how to get people unstuck, get them what I didn't know at the time out of resistance and to get them writing, they were like, how do you do this? This is I've never been able to write this easily before. So I started to study myself, like, what am I doing? And then people started to hire me. And I was a writer. <clears throat> I just said I was a writing coach. I was a writing coach and I still had some. I was still editor in chief at a company. I was doing some side work for consulting. And then in 2018, uh, well, actually in 2017, uh, the shit hit the fan. I had six good friends die. Oh, wow. 
I had uh, already been divorced. I mean, really good friends, different cancers, car accidents, like boom, 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 boom. Wow. One of which I, when I realized how quickly you lose people, I wound up hanging out with him for the six months of his final life. He's young. These are all people in their forties. Wow. Uh, wow. So early forties. And, um, and I went into a deep depression. My dad had already died. So it was like this combination and I'm not close to my mom. And so I just couldn't work. I literally couldn't work. I mean, I was in a, the dark night of the soul on a level that was so intense. Like I couldn't coach people. I couldn't be there and say, it's going to be okay. Like I didn't, I was single. I was like, I don't know what this means. So I was so depressed and grief stricken that I was on food stamps. Um, I was getting government help like Medicaid. And then I was picking up little bitty jobs here and there and didn't know if I was ever going to, I didn't know what was going on. So I thought, okay, I'm going to get out every morning and go to my friend's house. And he and I just were going to work together. He's like, we're going to get you back. And he was a businessman, high in sales. And he's like, let's figure this out. So he says, hey, let's make a bet. Why don't you write a book while we're doing your resume and looking for other things? So we made a bet in 30 days to write a book. Didn't matter how long it was. I won the bet. And the bet was like, I would either do his yard work or he would paint my living room. Like, cause we didn't, the money didn't matter to him. Sure. So he's like, make money. It's not gonna work. He lost the bet. Um, and I wrote a book called write your true story, how to unleash your creativity, share your message and inspire the world. It was based on helping these CEOs and executive directors write their, their the story of origin to attract more business. But I wrote it for everyone. And it was exactly how I would teach. And it was, I loved it. It was 80 pages, got it down to about 65 pages, uh, got a really inexpensive editor who was a friend of mine, put it up. I had 300 people on my email list at the time. I was on social media because I was a blogger. You remember back in the day. Mm -hmm. And I put this book out just as, as, a, as a there and, and a poetry book because I'm an award-winning published poet. But I was like, but here's a book. Here's here's the book. And two people hired me for $6,000 contracts in 48 hours. And I had $12,000. And I was like, whoa, I'm back in the game. So from there, I wound up, I borrowed a little bit of money. I hired a, uh, a business coach and I said, figure me out. What do I do? So she taught me exactly how to build an email list exactly how to survey my list. What do they want? What are their pain points? And it was all resistance, resistance, clarity, focus, discipline. So I started to have programs that were geared towards that. And I realized, wait, this is everything I learned in my transform. It was a tran it was called a um, transformational life coach. It's a solutions focused transformational life coach certification, but transformation happens with language inside of you. And when you change the inside world, the outside world changes. So I started using all of these techniques to help people write. And they were doing it. They said, oh, I've hired all these other people, but I never did it. This is what's going on. So fast forward, I've been in business now doing that since 2018. And uh, the pandemic hit right before the pandemic. I was so sick of working alone that a good, well, a client and then good friend of mine was a multimillionaire. He bought this building. We were going to do writing workshops, all kinds of creative workshops. He renovated it. It was gorgeous. I was on the board of directors. I had my own office. And three weeks later, we went into shutdown. Ugh, the whole thing gone to this day, gone. And I had a bad breakup and then boom, I'm in isolation. So I'm like, I'm, well, I, I was on a third acre living in a big house with a friend. So it wasn't terrible, big, big house. And uh, I was like, well, I should write a book. I should write a book about resistance. And we had already come up with the the title, Cracking the Resistance Code. So it was just kind of there and I was playing with it. So a transformational writing coach is someone who helps you transform not only the way you live, the way you show up as a writer, the ability to write and the skills, you get the skill set. The how is easy. The how is so easy. 
You know, like, like I can teach anybody how to be a great writer and I can say that with authority. Um, and I have the, the masters of fine arts. I mean, I know what, how to tell a great story, how to write a great story, memoir. Now I work with entrepreneurs that are teaching their expertise and in 2020, I discovered something called the short book. I was on a jog with my dog and I heard oneshortbook.com. And I always follow that little voice. So I stopped, got on my phone, went to GoDaddy. I use GoDaddy. And I, and I bought oneshortbook.com. Didn't know what I was going to do with it. Came back and depression with the isolation just started to come in. The voices in my head. My life, where am I? Who am I? Why am I here? It was sad it, as everyone else went through this trauma. Family members died of COVID right away. It was intense. Uh, my godmother and my cousin who I was close to, it was intense. So what was weird is I started to study the short reads. I, I don't know. This is like a God moment. This is like the divine channeling through me. And I started to study the short reads category and I realized you could be a bestseller in a short read book, which is under a hundred pages so much faster, pretty fast than you will ever be a bestseller in a regular Kindle section. So you'd be like 500,000th or a millionth in on the stats, but you'll be bestseller in three categories in short reads, Wow, okay. which, which means you get free advertising from Amazon. You get in the luge, meaning they just throw your book out to everybody. You get an author central page, which means that you say you'll be on podcasts and interviews and that you, you, you in the book, you put calls to action with links to hire you. Like it's an amazing system, even if you just want to write a book and you don't want to have a business, but you can have a business if you write a short book. So I started to study the formula and I created a very dense, amazing do it yourself program called one short book.com. It's called one short book, the new bestseller. I go in three times a month and do a Q and a with everybody in there. And I started to sell that and uh, with different webinars had different discounts and all that stuff. And it was really amazing. So I was like, well, time to write the book, cracking the resistance code. So this is all happening during 2020. I had a beta group that tested it on a very inexpensive price. So it was working people in it were hitting bestseller. Turns out that my first book probably was a bestseller and new releases, but Amazon doesn't let you go backwards, okay. but I was, I was still ranking high in that first book, which I was like, that's just so weird. So I thought we got this. I studied how to do the bestseller thing. Uh, as I mentioned to you on my B-roll before we went on <laughs> live is uh, that I used to work for Putnam Publishing in Midtown Manhattan. So I know that the publishing company is just another formula. It's another way of who you know, not what you know to some degree. And now they take all the control. They, they are, they're in control of your cover. They're in control of your editing. You, they you get maybe 20%, 16% of the profit. It's really not worth it anymore. So it's it, self-publishing is amazing. So I think I created the universe because of this moment. I told my professors, I only want to write short books, short stories and poetry. And they said, you'll never make any money doing that ever. I mean, I got lectured about it. I feel like it's eerie because now we live in a time where all the dreams that I wanted in grad school are applicable even more so now for the writer and respected and admired because people are so overwhelmed with information that a book under 100 pages is so calming to the nervous system to get a story or information. So I go to write the book. I go to write the book. I go to write the book. <laughs> and I'm in resistance. I'm <laughs> So deep in resistance that I'm embarrassed. Luckily, I'm like looking around like I'm a writer. Like I can't write. I can't write. So what was happening? I'm getting up. I'm finding myself in different rooms. Wait a second. Why am I in the kitchen? I was writing. Wait a second. Why am I out petting my dog? I was writing. Wait, why am I going out to run or or just look at what? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? So I got a timer, like I teach my clients, the Pomodoro method, you write for 20 minutes, take a break, write for 20 minutes. I put the timer on. Next thing you know, I'm in another room and the timer's going off. 
I'm not sitting down to write. Force myself to sit down. I'm, I, I'm just frozen. So I'm like, there's a reason this is happening. Now we all know, and I'm going to give them a plug. The Feel famous, free. the famous book on resistance is called The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Now it's famous, and I recommend everyone read it. But it's a little bit dated, meaning his references are getting a little bit dated. So I thought, what if I wrote a book about resistance, but instead of because his book is genius, it's awesome. But what if I wrote about how to actually get out of it not just the theory that it exists not just that you have to break through it and not just what happens when you break through it but step by step what is it that will get you out of this so that's when things got juicy and I started to really study what was going on and and what goes on with other people and here's the main I'll give I'll give away just one piece of it because in the book, I, I actually go over the 10 most common resistance styles, how to identify them, um, how to understand your personal resistance style. And then it will shape shift here and there. But once you understand it and can identify it, it can no longer keep you in resistance. And the main one, which I learned in my leadership courses because I keep up with my certifications in leadership is the call the military called it the F3 response so there's fight flight and freeze now I know psychology has like fawn and there's other things we're talking the basics we're talking the reptilian brain which is fight flight freeze food and fornication but for writing we're just talking fight flight and freeze because I thought back and thought what is it about the unknown about the uncertainty of the writing process that is so scary. That's like a saber-toothed tiger, right? Why is it when I'm, what is it about me being faced with uncertainty about writing that has me unconsciously disappear into another room? Well, that would be the flight response. Danger, get out of danger. Huh. Where did I learn the flight response? And in the book, I have you go back and I show you how my childhood, very briefly, and for you to look at the examples, how did you learn how to deal with danger from zero to eight years old? If you're having trouble writing, it's because your saber-toothed tiger has been programmed to do a certain thing when there's uncertainty or the unknown. So for me, it obviously was flight. And it's true. My dad always taught me. I grew up in the South Bronx in the 70s and 80s. I saw people being shot. I saw guns. I saw fights. I saw gangs. He said, if you get a feeling or you you think you see something or you hear something, you just get out of there. That's the best. Your best defense is to get out of there. Okay. What's my second? My second for writing was a combination of freeze and fight. I would freeze at first, but then I would yell at myself. You stupid, da, 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 da. You say you can't write. Bah, 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 bah. Fight, 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 fight. Or you could literally fight with somebody. You might literally be so frustrated that you'll get in an argument with somebody. So the fight response could just come up, you know? But I think that for me, you know, and my dad did teach me, you know, a lot of self-defense I knew a lot about fighting if I was in certain situations. So I was like, okay, so fight gets in there, but then it definitely turns to freeze. So, so which is the dominant and where do you go from there? Once I understood that I was running a program and once I looked at the, you know, I, I made a list based on years of working with people on resistance and in, in, in a life coaching and professional coaching and in writing coaching, um, I, I and, and studying it, uh, I was like, this, these are the, these are the ones that most, these are the 10 most common ones. And here are the symptoms of that. So what's cool is I went, okay, great. How to break through the fear of uncertainty and write your book. Right. But then I was like, this, this title is provocative. People like it. And I, I, I'm very happy with the designers. We worked together. I love the book. Yeah, it's great. They did a great job. 
and uh, it's Shanda Trofe. She's my publisher. Uh, and Shanda Trofe, she, if you get the book, there's her information is here too. She's a she's fantastic. Her editors are fantastic. Her designers are fantastic. You can do this all by yourself, by the way. In my one short book.com, go there. Um, program, I show you how to do all this on your own, not in soft cover, but in Kindle, right? Mm-hmm. If you really want a soft cover book, I highly recommend you hire somebody because that's tech, that's a lot of design work. But you don't have to. My clients have hit bestseller just with the Kindle version, doing everything on their own. And I teach you how. However, what does this mean? Cracking the resistance code. So I sat there and I looked up what a code is. And I started to get the history of codes from the Greeks and the Romans. And then I started to think about my dad's teaching and how I I really had to learn, this is crazy, how to break into and out of houses because there was fire codes weren't enacted then. And when you were at weird little clubs or bars or sometimes things happened and you didn't want to be run over or be burned or doors would lock. I remember being in NYU as a student and it was such an old building that the doors once got locked on us at night, Oh wow! not totally locked. They were broken. They were actually so old. And the teacher, he was panicking because it was like dark and people were gone. Security was gone. You know, it's New York and we were high up. I don't know if anyone's going to hear us. What are they going to do? And so I was like, I know how to pick a lock from the inside because my dad taught me this and I used to carry a knife that was uh, it was legal in terms of New York, uh, but it was the knife. And I didn't realize most people didn't women. I didn't realize most people didn't grow up in the family I grew up in, which was like a, a ex mob family, cop family, you know. So I pull out the knife and the teacher's like, what is that? I go, do you want to get out of here or not? And he's like, uh, cause he got mad at me. He was like, I'm going to report you. I'm like, do you want to get out of here or not? I got it all day. He's like, <laughs> he's like, no, go ahead. So I get the knife in a certain way. And I had a pin with me in a certain way. And like the door jam a certain way. And then I opened the door. It was, it, for me, it wasn't rocket science, but, um, so in the book, I, I was explaining these techniques I learned to crack in, to break into things or out of things for survival purposes. And then the thing my dad taught me the most is how to crack the code of your, uh, of your mindset. How are you going to deal with the fear? How are you going to deal with those voices in your head? And from a little girl, he really, really, really taught me that the greatest code you could ever crack is your, your mindset. Wow. And he was very, he was very Buddhist Christian. It was interesting. But when I turned 40, society, culture, relationships, family, they all came in and had me compare myself to the world. And slowly, all that beautiful, wonderful wonderment and knowledge that I was taught got buried and buried, buried under life and divorce and death. And I realized that I had to go back and figure out how to crack my code again. And what is a code? So I won't give away the fun parts of the book. <laughs> but, you know, there's a little bit of, but it really does apply to everyone. And so I've gotten some really great feedback from some of my 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 readers who are uh, testing it. I do want to say it's not my magnus opus. It's not like the book of books that I want to write. I'm proving a point. Here's the point that I'm proving. You can have an idea, it can be under 100 pages, and you can reach bestseller. Now, when I was a kid, you were lucky if you printed things out on your typewriter or a word processor, stapled them together, you were lucky if your cousins read them. Lucky. Right. Now, if you have a story, everyone does, if you have a mess that became your message, if you have a struggle that you overcame, if you've got information that that other people don't have in the way that you can tell it, anyone, anyone can be a good writer. Doesn't have to take more than two or three months, six at the most. And you can put it up on Kindle for free. No ISBN number. You can use my program to understand it better. And you can be 
if you if you don't hit bestseller, I'll tell you what, you will get a thank you letter if you put it on social media and you send it out to people because someone out there will relate and thank you for your information. So that's how I got here. And that's how the book was born. So in your book, you talk through the process of cracking the code, but you also kind of crack your own code in the process. It was interesting. It was, it, you know, I, I finally, after suffering, I mean, really like it was good for me though. Like, cause I was suffering as if I was someone else suffering. Right. Like, Everyone got on in, in uh, on uh, social media, right? The celebrities realized they needed us more than we needed them, which I love that line because someone, that was not my line. Someone said that. And I was like, boom. Yeah. They were like, what do we do now? So they all jumped on Instagram and they all jumped on TikTok. And, and I got word that just because I pay attention, that TikTok was, was what we, and I hate this term, it was called blue waters, which meant, it was predicted that TikTok was going to be huge and everyone, oh yeah, whatever, it's for kids. So I jumped on and started learning TikTok. And in three weeks, I got 14,000 followers. Oh. And I was like, whoa. But then what happened? And I and I kind of had it sitting there. I don't, I mean, me and my social media team, we're figuring things out now because I've got like 5,000 on Instagram and 14,000 on TikTok and Facebook, I've got about 8,000 total, but we're thinking of moving everything over to YouTube, whatever, doesn't matter. Back in 2020, what I hit is the wall of comparison. It was great. So what? I told little short stories. It was funny. I got on TikTok. I just did the algorithm for TikTok as an experiment. So I did true stories because I like writing true stories. So I did really quick one minute true stories. People got a kick out of it. Um, and then I got an Instagram and I wanted to be an Insta poet because of my poetry is, is one of my arts and it's one of my I deepest love your poetry, by the way. Oh, thank you. I, I, I love my poetry too. I'll be honest. It's, it's, I take time and pride with that. And I feel like I channel it, you know, and I really love it because people don't like poetry because poetry doesn't like most people. That was a line that someone said a long time ago. And I don't actually like a lot of poetry because they're, it's very egocentric. People are mostly thinking of themselves. And so you're reading about them. And and sometimes it's just like, so? And so what I've integrated in my poetry for years, because I was a spoken word poet and, and did a lot of stage work, is when I write poetry, I want to include my readers. I want to include the human condition. Uh, much like Mary Oliver or Billy Collins, like I want to include the things that we all feel. And so that's one of the reasons that I love my poetry is because I, I train myself. Okay, now here's a poem, but where's the where where's the audience in here? And it's fun because I start to, to 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 sculpt it that way. Anyway, I get on Instagram, and I start comparing myself to everybody. Just I'm not good enough. Now eight billion people are getting on social media. You know me back in the day, I was one of the first bloggers to really, mm -hmm. I mean, like I, I used to like weekly, I would get six to 10,000 hits when I first started. That was considered a lot back then. Huge. Absolutely. And I, it was huge. And I was very personal, very personal. And so I had fans and now I, I took, I mean, it, I can see it. I have it. It's, it's locked because it's so personal that I would be canceled. Like, like I would be in the cancel culture canceled because I was saying things, not terrible things, but people would take it the wrong way. Right, right. I was being sarcastic. I was being funny. And, 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 and people really enjoyed it. They were like, oh, I can't believe you said that. That's great. You know, I enjoyed it. I, it's, a lot of people enjoyed it. And, and, and some people would get, I remember this one time I picked a fight. Uh, I called it picked a fight with uh, a type of music called dubstep. And I wrote uh, that it was the most terrible genre <laughs> ever. And I, I and I really wrote it well. And like 250 people 
in California and the Pacific Northwest started a fight on the comments, oh. right? I didn't have to do anything. I never even commented. They were just, she's right, she's wrong, she's right, she's wrong. <laughs> and then someone said, oh my gosh, my boyfriend didn't realize he got he got a trap. He, he fell for your trap. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, well, your trap is you like to have a very serious conviction about something that eh, you're not really, you don't really care that much about. It's just fun. It's fun to have a conviction. Tide is the best detergent. Great, a great writer named Jeff Goins, great writer. He wrote uh, Real Artists Don't Starve. He's written like 20 bestsellers. Uh, he, in one of his blogs, he says, pick a fight. This is before the cancel culture, right? Uh, and, he's, and he gave that example. You write a blog that Tide is the best ever and everyone else is wrong, right? And you'll get a response, right? Like, so the idea was to 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 jack people up to like, let, let, let's have some fun with this. Well, that was really fun until it wasn't. And then I realized, ooh, this could get sticky as things were evolving. And I'm really glad that I took a lot of that down because when things started to shift and everybody became an us or themer, right? Right. Holy macaroni. We, like everybody out there, stop. <laughs> stop. Right now. You're ruining the world. If you take a side, I don't care if it's to the left or to the right. I don't care. If you're taking a side, you are taking the world down with negativity period. I don't care what side you're on. How about you be on the human side and enjoy life and love people and stop judging people. So I'm just going to say that as a public service announcement, stop. So I don't, I consider myself non-political now. I can, and this has helped me with resistance. So as 2020 was happening and I lost friends, they, I, I didn't even say anything. I literally was being a New Yorker in a comment on a personal message in Facebook and a friend of mine in Alaska read me the riot act and then unfriended me. Oh. And I was like, she was a best friend of mine. I mean, I was so, of course I cried. I was, I, I couldn't get her back. She wouldn't pick up the phone. She wrote a story on like two lines. When I said, I said something like you've been isolated in Alaska too long, girlfriend. You need to start, uh, cause she was so serious and, and, and negative on her. I said, you need to, you need, you need a break. Well, she took that and whatever story she wrote, I was canceled from her wow. life. So I started getting really like freaked out. Yeah. So, yeah. So like, then I started getting afraid to write even more. And then like, so ultimately, finally, um, I remembered a doctor in 2004. I had ulcers, not really ulcers. I had, I had GERD. I had I, almost an ulcer. I had a, they checked me with like a scope. I had a little bit sure. of a scar tissue, but I didn't have a real ulcer. And we tried to figure out what it was that was making me crazy. And I had just gotten divorced, but it was really because I was at that time. And prior to that, um, highly political. Like I, 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 I paid attention. And then I learned from a book called, by Hunter S. Thompson called Better Than Sex, he wound up be being with the Clinton administration all the way from the beginning to the end of his very first election. And he wrote a book about how there was no difference between either party and that both parties actually hung out quite a bit. And the only thing better than sex was the power of winning. And when I read that book, um, and I told my doctor, he goes, oh, you're paying attention to Paul. <laughs> He goes, here's your prescription. You want a prescription? He goes, I will cure you of your stomach illness. I said, what? Because they did all the tests and they were trying to figure it out. He goes, it's emotional and mental. He goes, I don't want you to read the news, listen to the news, pay attention to the news or have anything to do with the news at all. Because all it is, is fear. So from 2004 until Obama was elected in 2016, because I really was happy about that, um, I didn't do any, I, I never knew what was going on. My business flourished. My life flourished. Everything was great, honestly. I mean, there was ups and downs, but like not no more stomach problems. 
2020 brought back a few stomach problems because it was almost impossible not to want to know what's going on with COVID. Is the world ending? Are people, right. people dying? So, so now you're taking in way too much inter- information from other, you, you can't help but see all the other bullshit out there. But again, there was all the sides. There was the, you know, wear the mask, don't wear the mask, don't do this, do that. And, and then the, right the vaccine is bad. It's going to kill you. It's not going to kill you. It's going to call. Them. I mean, wow. Talk about fear. Talk about fear. The world went through the most trauma of fear that it's been through ever because we were never connected globally. Social media is brand new. So it was the very first time in, in history that we knew what was going on everywhere. Right. right? Back when before that, if there was a plague somewhere, you were still happy that you had a garden. You still treated your grandkids great. You still were you still were nice to your neighbors because that's where you make the biggest that's where you make the biggest difference. Now we're like frozen and we can't make any difference, you know? So 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 yeah, so that I would say comparison and fear of of like being seen, being heard, like oh my gosh. I mean, it was insanity. So that was great for me because I started to write in my journal, what's going on in my head? Where is this coming from? Why am I getting activated? Where's my anxiety coming from? I'm on a third acre in a beautiful house with one of my best friends and, and my beautiful dog. And I walk, our neighborhoods didn't wear, our neighborhood didn't wear masks at all because we lived in a very rural neighborhood. So we could always be across the street from each other. So we saw our neighbors, we saw smiles, you know, when we went to the store. Yeah, sure. That was different, but we got to be human. Um, So I was very lucky in that, even though there was little real close contact. And, um, but the resistance that I really got to analyze from all my teachings um, all my studies, um, my leadership training, which was all about language, uh, my transformational training, how does someone transform is all about language, uh, internal language, external language, what you see, what you take in, the subconscious mind, what's your, what are you taking in? What are you filling your mind with? And how that affects, get this, the chemistry of the body. So a thought then creates your body uh, to produce certain chemical reactions when there's fear and, and anxiety, you know, and uncertainty and the unknown about creativity. Well, what happens is as you get used to the fear and the anxiety and the body keeps producing those uh, chemicals, if you wake up and it's a sunny day and you decide not to listen to the news that day or whatever, and you are actually having what would be seen as a good day, your chemistry now starts to create all of those chemicals for anxiety and fear because it says, oh, no, 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 no. You get scared at this time every day. This is the time of day that you freak out. So now you start, your heart starts racing. The adrenaline is going. You don't even know why. And so what do you do? You have to make up a reason for it. So now your thoughts are going and now you've got to make up stories as to why you feel a certain way. So thoughts affect your chemistry. Your chemistry starts to program you. You start, so you just start to be a program. You just start, you have no control over your thoughts. We think 85,000 thoughts a day. Whatever you think before you go to bed is going to be what you wake up with. Think about a world that went to sleep terrified waking up terrified every day and i know this is true because i'm also a certified consulting hypnotist and i help people practice my clients go to sleep a certain way if you go to sleep writing a writing a list of gr- gratitude if you actually do this because it's so easy and people are like oh that's so easy but nobody does it but if you actually go to sleep with a list of gratitude Everything from my feet feels cozy on these 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 sheets to I'm glad I have eyes that can see to, you know, I like the color paint on my wall. It doesn't have to be huge. You will wake up thinking those same thoughts. You do this enough times, you start to change the chemistry 
of your mind and body, you start to change. And when you change the internal world, guess what happens? The external world starts changing. Now, even if you don't believe, which I do, in God and the divine and how all these forces are working in your favor, but we have something called free will. We have something called free will and choice. If you don't actively, and they've done, Joe Dispenza's work is amazing because he worked with scientists and doctors, and this has been proven. If you don't actively communicate, actively communicate with all the dimensions and all the energies that made you here alive, because you're not here by accident, it won't do anything for you because you're just not communicating with it. But if you communicate, meaning you're telling even yourself, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. Why would the external world change? Well, now say you're an atheist and you're like, I don't believe in all that shit. I just believe in the brain and psychology. Well, think about it. Well, if your psychology is healthy, then you're going to act a different way in front of everybody. You're going to produce better work. You're going to exercise. You're going to go on a walk more. You're going to like your life more. So of course the external world is going to get better, but you have to manage the horse. There is a wild horse that if you, so when people have horses, I I don't have a horse, but I have my dog, but a horse is a better one. You get on a horse, the horse wants to go a certain way. You kick it, you go, no, right? You pull on that and you tell the horse, I mean, you love your horse. Horses are amazing creatures. And you tell your horse, we're going that way. And you 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 move the, the thing that way, the horse is going to go that way. You know, uh, if you're on a bike, if you're skiing, whatever it is, if you look a certain direction, you're going to go in that direction. You have a brain that is a wild horse. And until you choose to do the exercises, to get through your resistance, so that your resistance doesn't scare you. It has no power over you whatsoever anymore. And you get to the other side. But the first the first part is called know thyself. The second part is called know the enemy, resistance. And the third part is called know divine forces. So there are things going on that you don't know about that's going on. Even Stephen Pressfield talks about it in The War of Art. So being in that much resistance and being in alone allowed me to write the book in a way that actually works for people. So, so, so now it's, again, it's not my magnus opus. I wrote it because I really wanted to teach what I do with my clients. I wrote it because of 2020 and this amazing download that just started to happen and just started to like put me in this place. I mean, it really was just a God moment where I, What do I love to write? So get ready, everybody out there. If you want to see my poetry, I'm on Instagram and it's Dawn Writes Poetry. That's the handle. But what I really love, and I've not talked about this at all. So this is the first time. This is a scoop? Brand new. I love fiction based on true events. And that's what I went to school for. Now that short books are so hot, and particularly a series. If you really want to make good passive income, you would write a series of short books, like three of them, you know, in a in a series, just like just like Netflix, just like binging a show. I teach this in my course as well. Um, but I'm going to write. Wait for it. It's going. I'm not going to. I actually I'm, I haven't honed in on exactly what it's about. But let me tell you, it's an exciting adventure about a woman who goes through some really wild stuff to come out the other side with some, and let's just say it's it's sort of like, God, what would it be like? It would sort of be like a Quentin Tarantino movie meets, oh uh, gosh, what would it meet? Something like 
like a Quentin Tarantino movie meets something a little more calm. I don't know what that would be. So I've got to, I've got to come up with it. It's not Scorsese. That's too mobster. <laughs> yeah. You know, I grew up mobster. I don't need mobster, but I like the, the Quentin Tarantino weirdness of it. Yeah. 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 The way he, I like telling a story like that. And, and you don't expect certain characters to do certain things. Um, it's based on truth. It's all based on true events. So people can guess what's true and what's what I, you know, it's going to be fiction based on true events. Um, but I would say it's sort of like, God, who would it be? What's a movie that I really, really adore? It's true romance meets Quentin Tarantino, which, by the way, I think I just screwed up because I think Quentin Tarantino wrote true romance. <laughs> uh, you know, so so actually, I got to look that up right now. True romance, Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, unfortunately, I just screwed up. So it's Quentin Tarantino meets Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, he wrote it. He didn't direct it. Uh, so yeah, there is it got a Quentin Tarantino. Let's just say aspect of it in uh, about a woman, but in short form, going through some really interesting, uh, dangerous, and yet uh, like um, transformational life events that I think everyone can relate to but in an entertaining way. So, so that's, 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 that's all I got. Cause I don't want to give anything away right now. <laughs> well, you know, when that comes to fruition, you know, I'm going to bug you for another interview. Oh, we're doing it. Yeah. That's going to be fun. Yeah. Be <laughs> before I let you go, tell everybody where they could find your book, when it comes out, where they can find you. Cause man, they should check you out. I, I love your, your uh, social media posts. Okay. So a um, couple of different places. So my name, donmonofusco.com. Uh, is my website, which we're going to update, but it's mostly updated. Um, Instagram is my poetry. So that's John Wright's poetry. Uh, and that's on my website. Like you can see the little social shares up there. Uh, but on Amazon, from May 4th to May 6th, but May 4th is the big day uh, to download Cracking the Resistance Code for 99 cents. You can also buy the soft cover, but for 99 cents, you grab it, you can read it. It's awesome. And then in the back of the book, you'll see the links to even, to do more with me. And if this interview has sparked you and you want to talk to me directly, you can just go to helpmedon.com and that will take you to uh, linking to a free strategy call. So you can get on the phone with me for 20 minutes and I can help you with whatever you need help with, support you and see if there's a program that I have that fits or help you have resources uh, to, to get through your resistance and to get from where you are to where you want to be, they say in coaching. <laughs> well, Don, you have an amazing story. And like I said, I mean, I followed you for a lot of years. I love your writing. I love your poetry. I can't wait to get the, the book. Um, from everything you've said through this, it just sounds like an amazing, amazing, uh, amazing read. I know what I'm talking yeah. about. Um, <laughs> and and the, the thing, one of the things I really love about your poetry, and it sounds like it's going to be in your book as well, is I know you said your poetry is about other people too, but I could really see your soul through your poetry. And I think it's the best combination of you and incorporating others. And, and I can tell that in your book, it's going to be along the same lines. So it's I true. Yeah, it. I put it. It's very poetic. And a, a, a side note, um, we are putting together a poetry book uh, with the Instagram poems so that people have that there. So there's a few things coming awesome. out. Awesome. Yeah. But yeah. right now, cracking the resistance code, May 4th to May 6th is 99 cents. And then I, I don't know, I, my publisher, I think, bumps it up to $7.99 or something like that. So grab it, get out of resistance. And here's the best part it doesn't just apply to writing. Even if you're a painter, a person, a gardener, you, or you want to go out and date again, you can actually use the section about resistance and pretty much apply it to anything. So have fun. <laughs> I'm sold. I'm absolutely, I can't, I can't wait to read it. I encourage everyone to really check you out. You are one of the coolest people I've ever been in contact with. Uh -huh. And I, I so very much appreciate your time. And like I said, when you get, when more stuff goes out there, I get the first interview or at least yes, one. You Yes, you do. You know, you get it. Don, you have a fantastic rest of your day and uh, good luck with Johnny. the board. Okay, I love you. Love Bye. you too. Take care. Bye. You too.